All right, let's check this out here. All right, so this is a Navi D video, this new one. I wonder what Busy thinks about it. Even though some would disagree, Eminem will go down as a I heard Eminem was a Greek god. Dude, look at that. Holy sh No, dude. He is a rap god. And this is like their basis for that. And I'm personally believing it. Pop legend. But what most people don't realize is how Dr. Dre made one small change to Eminem's music, one tiny adjustment. And this is what helped turn Eminem from a failure into a superstar. But what did he do? What was the small change that Dr. Dre made? Well, the answer lies on the Slim Shady LP. Here you can find the unique formula Dr. Dre used to help Eminem's career take off. So today we're gonna break down Eminem's music and I feel like I know this, I know what he's talking about in the back of my head, but I can't think what it what it is. I don't know, what what is it in the chat, guys? It plays records, I think. Really? The, the turntable plays records, okay. All right, I made a whole ass video about one small ass change. I mean, he's got me hooked though. Um, uh, Dre did cool stuff with stereo imaging. There is no fucking way it is stereo imaging. No way. Compression? Okay, I don't know guys, I don't know about that. Analyze the production before and after Dr. Dre and what changes he made that helped Eminem. Dre told him to quit smoking weed? Holy sh Become the legend he is today. So to fully understand this story, we need to start with where Eminem was before Dr. Dre. And the best place to look is on his first album, Infinite. Even though this is where it all started for Eminem, he viewed this album as a failure when it came out, as it only sold a- I can't get over how fucking ripped Navi looks in his videos, dude. I feel like I have to agree with him, dude. Like, I don't know if he's trying to look intimidating, but like the shirt just seems too small all the time. And I'm just like, all right, man. All right, all right, man. <laughs> Whatever you say, man. I'm just believing you. I'm just believing you. I don't care what you're saying right now. Around 70 copies. And when you break down the production on this album, you start getting a sense of why this album failed to do what Eminem hoped. For example, let's take a listen to the lead track, Infinite. My pen and paper cause a chain reaction to get your brain relaxing. A zaniac, a maniac, an action. Eminem himself has written about the song saying that after it came out, his music was being compared to- Oh, I think I think I remember hearing this in a different video before. Like, he sounded more like AZ and Nas, and then like he kind of developed more of his own sound, I think. Nas and right? AZ. But he didn't want to be considered just a clone. He wanted his music to stand out. And part of what got in the way of Eminem's ability to stand out was his early production. For example, this beat starts off with this slowed down, stretched out layered jazz sample. And from here, we start to see many traditional, well-explored boom bap ideas. For example, the sample gets filtered down. And then we have this tambourine pattern that comes in, which really makes this feel. I feel like the point of this is not really the beat, but somehow he made a, he found a way to work in like a tutorial about like how the beat was made. Like a Lord Finesse beat. You gotta at least check the conscious 777 page, see what new madness there is. Not watching though. I think he's deaf a troll. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost paused. He has to be a troll. Okay, we'll look at that after. We'll just take like a quick look. We'll just like take a peep and then like, you know, duck out real quick. Now, while this is a great track, listening back to it now, back in 1990- This whole video is a fit check. I got peep, man, I got, I got up my game, working out and dressing. That's how, that's what I'm learning so far from this video. Six, when this album came out, these production ideas just didn't help Eminem stand out and make the impact that he wanted. So Eminem was struggling at this time, but what you might not know is that Dr. Dre was also going through a hard time in his career at this exact same time. The timing of this was so crazy. Both of us were in really bad situations. So what led to Dr. Dre's struggles? Well, he'd just come off producing an album for The Firm, a group made up of Nas, AZ, Foxy Brown, and Nature. And when this album came out, it was considered a flop. It was criticized for its mainstream pop or- I see more videos of you having a tight shirt on. Bro, I, I wore my girlfriend's, her, one of like her band shirts the other day to like get coffee. That shit was funny as hell, dude. That shit was funny, uh, man. Like, I didn't even think it was gonna be that tight on me. Entered sound and Dr. Dre himself talks about the struggles he faced. What band? All, always, always. It's like always, but spelled with two Vs. It's like a uh, indie rock band. Let's watch Tatro, guys. No, 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 Please, please, no, 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 let's not, let's not do that. When trying to put this out, Album together when we were doing that record it was a lot of problems yeah. in the studio because um i only spent maybe four days in the studio with the artists uh -huh. and we were Dude, that is hilarious putting your head right up to the, the fucking gear at the studio and just you got the hardware right here and then just like that's dude, that's funny as f 
it just seems so staged and like just not i don't know <laughs> i only spent maybe four days in the studio with the artists uh -huh. and we were supposed to make a record within these four days the whole album you know what i'm saying Nas was cool he came in and did his thing mm -hmm. foxy she missed like five airplanes or something to get into the studio she shows yeah, up to the yeah. studio. she just can't catch a plane dude i don't understand it's not that hard man studio she's in there like one hour that's the reason why that record wasn't as successful as yeah. we planned so both of these artists were going through a tough time but this is where the story starts to take a turn for the better when their paths finally cross while dr dre was looking for a new artist to work with he happened to hear eminem's demo and decided to give him a shot he brings eminem to his studio with an idea for a beat that he thinks might work for him dude five planes is crazy i just can't get over that man he loads the beat up and sees what eminem can do with it and that song that they make just after meeting for the first time it becomes a huge hit the song i'm talking about is my name is my name is my name is what bro let's have the kids in elementary and middle school going crazy dude this yeah i'm not sure what the formula is maybe he'll get into it pretty soon here though and I, I trust in navi d pulls up in a way that eminem never saw coming and in a way that hip-hop had never seen before it attracted a whole new demo predominantly white kids too. yeah I, yeah this had the white kids i mean pretty much like all like the the suburban kids going crazy suburb kids like were never the same after eminem came out with my name is a graphic of people into hip-hop suburban white kids they loved eminem and his music now, one obvious explanation for why this happened is because Eminem is white, and this is the common explanation most people give for his success. But I think there's another part to this story that never gets talked about, and that's the production. Dr. Dre did something different with the songs that he produced for Eminem. He used sounds and ideas that appear. One thing I noticed is it doesn't really have like that constant hi-hat. Like that's one thing that seems different about the beats, or at least the beat in My Name Is. Yield to this new audience. Now you might be wondering what exactly I'm talking about well i'll let dave Chappelle explain you know all my life i've heard that white people can't dance oh man no nah, it's not true it's not true <laughs> it is true it's Stop. not true you're in denial it's not true i don't believe that it's that they Delusional. like certain musical instruments that instrument my friends is electric guitar it's my personal theory that when white people hear electric guitar they cannot resist the urge to dance, no matter where they are. Okay, folks, here we are in a corporate boardroom. This is a, this is classic, though. This is classic. We want to see, but it's not true. It's not true. What happens when you play electric? People are like Weaver, then you dance. No, 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 no. I can't, I can't, I can't right do that. Now. I can't do that. But it's not true. It's not true. Guitar in the most professional of settings. Ready, John. <laughs> Now, this is obviously meant to be a funny way of looking at it, but the premise here is that white audiences were used to hearing certain kinds of sounds and instruments and music from genre. Racist. Racist, Navi. Nah, I'm on BWB's side now. I'm switching sides. Racism. No. That's not racist. Nah, nah. Genres like punk and rock, namely the electric guitar. And what you'll also notice about many of the songs that Dr. Dre produced for Eminem's album is that he explores this with his production. For example, let's break down how my name is was made by first looking at the sample used. Just a song, now, what you'll notice is that the way Navi D starting race wars over here, dude. <laughs> Dr. Dre manipulates the sample, makes it sound like an electric guitar. So here's the loop that was used. So the first thing Dr. Dre uses is a gate effect. What this is basically doing is it's taking all the audio underneath this yellow line here and turning the volume all the way down for all this audio. Next, listen to how Dre takes the remaining audio and makes it so much louder. For most producers, they tend to take dense complex samples and shrink them into a mono space and EQ a lot of frequencies to get them to fit into their beat. But Dr. Dre does the opposite here with the use of compression and distortion. Tarig 6. And the use of distortion Six. here really makes this organ start to sound more and more like a guitar. One additional detail that you might have noticed is that the percussion is making this loop sound imbalanced right now. 
you can hear it's pretty much in now nah, i mean you, you gotta admit though the reason why he titled it this, this is algorithm fuel baby this is algorithm fuel all right naming it uh what was it whatever it was beat breakdown or whatever nah that ain't that ain't gonna that ain't gonna fly the algorithm don't like that that's not mm -mm. that's not that's not getting people that don't know about it to, to get into it entirely on the right channel i'll replay it and you can take a listen to this once again So what Dr. Dre does is that he flips the entire sample partway through. The secret is guitar rig. Yes, he time traveled in order to get guitar rig. This helps the beat not sound as imbalanced. 7.8K views isn't exactly algorithm fire, but he was trying. Well, that's what I'm saying. You got to try. I mean, like usually his is algorithm fuel. This title was an attempt at algorithm fuel. All right. Like, I mean, if you look at normally what these sort of titles do. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it works, man. The most hated FL Studio producer ever this works since the percussion gets flipped all the way from the right to the left half but it is important that the the title fits the video as well because if it doesn't the people are not going to watch as long so you got to kind of like you know the title and the idea of the video got to still be in sync this news will change your life to be fair when i say that i'm saying it ironically okay i know it's not going to change your fucking life and you should know it's not going to change your life did you click on that thinking it was going to change your life you must be really fucking, if you click on this thinking it was going to change your life through the loop So this is how I like, I like that subtle panning like that. The beat that became Eminem's first major hit was made, getting a whole new audience introduced into hip hop. And you can even see this similar approach for the second single off of this album, Role Model, another Dr. Dre produced song. Here again, you see the use of the electric guitar as the central instrument. It's only the third single, Guilty Conscience, where the album starts to go towards something that's a little bit less guitar focused and more hip hop oriented. The beat uses a piano as a core instrument instead. Now, having said that, a guitar at the FL keys there still does appear in this beat. It's just made less central. And from here, we see classic Dr. Dre sounds and ideas that come into this beat, like the inclusion of strings and this cool sounding synth here. Can't does that sound out of key? So this is why I say the production ideas of these Dr. Dre singles, as well as the order that these singles were released, was also what helped Eminem climb to these amazing new heights. This helped attract and acclimate this new audience into a genre that they might have never given a chance before. And it also helped Dr. Dre and Eminem become household names. So comment down below, let me know you- Wait, I, I can't tell if I was zoning out too much, but what was this the key though? What was the key? It was, it was in the beats, it was in the beats. About this, or if I'm talking straight malarkey with this opinion like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and uh in the meantime why not yeah uh sub to nabby d if you haven't by the way the key was guitars the key was pandering to what pandering do to watch the key was just unique production white people like guitars yeah yeah white people and guitars basically yeah white yeah whites and the whites and them guitars